was up, my beautiful people? This is episode one of season eight of the Circle Up podcast. It is a collaboration between Project Circle Up, Till the End podcast, Spin Frequency podcast, and the event that we held in July 2021 at Eagle's Nest, San Marcos, Guatemala, Impact 2021. And in this first clip, it is a solo podcast where I kicked off what we were entertaining and and desiring to create, which was the world's longest podcast. Uh, We did not meet that goal, but we did meet our intention, which was to create community, to create a heart-centered conversation, and to create impact globally. And so that was accomplished. Stoked that we took the risk that we did of thinking that this was possible uh, and and uh, learning from this experience. So, like I said, first episode is up on the docket is yours truly for about 35 minutes. And I really am looking back. Today is December 31st, 2021. So it was almost six months ago that I recorded this conversation. And looking back, I am... Honestly fired up just like that where my communication skills have come in the last few years and where my storytelling ability has come in the last few years and clearly it's showing where I've been spending my time and energy and enthusiasm and that will shift over the course of 2022 but you will be able to see some of me at my best here and I know that over the course of the next two three five years it will continue to get better and so if you're, if you're listening and you are curious about some of the experiences that helped me become who I am in 2021, some of the really hard learned lessons, really hard learned lessons in 2021, this is one of the big ones that I would tune into. It's shaping who I am as a man. It's influencing literally every decision that I make right now in this conversation that you're about to hear, I get into um, my experience with depression in high school. I get into an accident that I had in Guatemala this summer. I get into why Jack.org is one of my favorite charities of all time. And I get into why Man You Know I Got You, which is the book that is created to create awareness about men's mental health about healthy masculinity, empowered masculinity, and about circle up and raising awareness that our men's circle exists and that you can participate if you want to, all in this episode. And uh, I do not think you will regret tuning in. You will learn about me, but you will also be challenged to think about your life and introspect about your life and introspect about your decisions, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, who you spend your time with will be challenged in this conversation. Moving in to 2022, I couldn't think of a more appropriate time for me to be going over this. I could be doing anything right now, I could be hanging out at the beach, I could be doing whatever I want, but this is what I decided was most important for me to reflect on some of the most important experiences that I had in 2021 and to offer that to you here. So enjoy. This is episode one of season one coming from Context For You, a live event that we hosted in 2021, San Marcos, Guatemala, collaboration between Project Circle Up, Till The End Podcast, Spin Frequency Podcast with our boy Michael Miller and Eagle's Nest, San Marcos, Guatemala. Please enjoy this episode of the show. I'll see you on the other side. Soon I'm feeling righteous. I'm one of the drink is hard to digest. Five or six puppies in my right hand. So is uh, Greg down there waiting for you guys to start or what? I'm going to go there right now. Okay. I think we're just going to go for it. Y'all go have fun. Thank you. They're starting. They need you. Oh. All right. Enjoy. Love you, baby. Peace fruit I come back in a few. Enjoy. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Okay. okay. You ready? Good job. Yeah. Yes. I'll be, I'll be very really careful. careful. I'll be very careful. He's like my grandfather. Um, Hello. Why are you? Don't come. Necesito hacer la podcast. Ahora es uh, la, yeah. la, el mundo's más grande podcast. You lose, but you lose the, the beginning? No, it's okay. No, it's saved. Está bien, todo bien. Eres un sueño. <laughs> Chao. Capaz. Chao. <laughs> Holy shit, she's so Okay, this is the world's longest podcast. Tune in to San Marcos, Guatemala. I don't know what you've seen 
or what's been said, but I do know that our hearts are in the right place. And that's really what we're here for. We're here to talk about um, the heart. We're here to talk about our roots. We're here to talk about our vision. And I would actually say that it starts in a different order. It starts from the roots to the heart to the vision. And I'm being connected to that here in San Marcos. I've been introspecting over the last six weeks. Hace seis semana ahora en Guatemala. Entonces, uh, todos las personas necesitamos pensar sobre la vida. So everyone needs to take time to reflect on our lives. And uh, this experience for me has been so eye-opening because the way that the universe plays out um, in my experience is it's always communicating to you. It's always asking you to listen. It's always asking you to pay attention. It's always asking you to be present in the moment. It's like you walk around the corner and you stub your toe and you realize that you were checking your phone and eating food as you were walking and your toe got stubbed and all of a sudden um, what seems just like an inconvenience or a pain in your ass or a pain in your foot as that example shows can be so much more if you decide to look at it that way. It can be so much more if you decide to pay attention to it. In our men's circle um, at Circle Up, which I'm so excited that we're going to have the opportunity to chat about over the next 48 hours of podcasting, uh, we talk about this concept called everything, everything, everything. Everything, everything, everything. And the reason why I like everything, everything, everything so much is because John Maxwell said oftentimes you need to be reminded then you need to learn something new. So we're always seeking new knowledge and new insight. And three years ago, I heard everything, everything, everything for the very first time. And while you know I've been uh, stretching myself and looking for new opportunities and looking for new knowledge and new mentors, if I'm if I come to the root to the universe, to myself, to my true self, to my higher self, to my light then everything, everything, everything is really the root of it all, which is everything, everything, everything that transpires in my life reveals something about me as a man, me in relationships, and me as a leader, if only I pay attention. Everything, everything, everything that transpires in my life reveals something about me as a man, me in relationships, and me as a leader, if only I pay attention. And this experience in San Marcos in Guatemala has given me such a beautiful opportunity to start paying close attention because the universe is sending you signals. It's sending you messages. It's asking you to look. It's asking you to be present. It's asking you to trust the moment to realize and recognize that there's only now um, that's what it's doing. And this experience in San Marcos really helped me realize first and foremost, fundamentally, that my root system is um, it, uh, uh, uprooted or hasn't been, ta- hasn't been cultivated um, with enough care and energy, right? That's the seeds that were planted. Those roots, those seeds. Um, to do my potential and my light and my possibility, Jonathan as a possibility, you as a possibility, to do it justice. It needs care and time and energy and, and love and, uh, and seeds that are gonna harvest beautiful fruits, right? Jim Rohn always said, if you plant thistle seeds, if you plant weed seeds, if you plant I don't know, kale. <laughs> if you plant kale in the spring, when the farmer goes into the in the fields and he prepares the soil and he sows the seeds and he sows kale, come harvest time, come fall, he's not going to reap apples or tomatoes or um, anything uh, like that. He's going to reap kale. So 
the fruits of our lives, the personal reality, the outside circumstance is actually just a symptom of the root. So 30 days ago when I did the cliff jumping spot in San Marcos and I said the first one was for fun and the second one's for my ego. The first one's for fun and the second one's for my ego. And I do the second jump after Ian jumped, Mosin jumped, uh, Shireen was with us and she jumped, uh, came back up. Ian did a second jump. He did like a, a fun little, um, you know, just a, 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 an easy, fun move to enter the water to have a good time. But it's like 30 feet. And so I said, first one's for, my, for fun, second one's for my ego. And the fruit of my life, the results, this harvest, it manifested itself as me being an idiot taking action from my ego, that root system, AKA the place that generates the outside circumstances of my life were not in balance or they weren't coming from love. They weren't coming from my commitment. It's coming from my ego. It's coming from a place of scarcity. It was coming from a place of fear. And so I jumped a second time and I did a flip, a trick that I've done so many times, but never from that height. I wasn't prepared, I was rushed, and I over-rotated, and as I was supposed to land on my feet, I landed on my lower back. Immediately, the water hit my back, pushed it up, my spine, my ribs, all the air gone out of my body, gasping for air, just thinking to myself, holy shit, can I move my legs while I'm underwater? Finally resurface. I see Mosin at the top, the look on his face, he's concerned. So all I can think, I'm in, the, I'm in shock now. All I can think is thumbs up, I'm good dude, I'm good dude. And then turning to the rocks to try to swim towards them, my entire back spasming and seizing, as it should, because it's trying to protect my spine. That's what the body was designed to do, it's highly intelligent. And I get to the rocks and make my way up and I'm, I'm you know, checking myself for wounds and I'm paying attention to how I feel and I'm putting on a mask that everything's okay because I don't want the people around me to be concerned. I don't want to ruin their day. I don't want to ruin their fun. And also I don't want to be hurt too. I don't want to be seen inside this vulnerability, um, inside my lack of self-sufficiency. I can hardly take care of myself. I'm fucking stumbling my way up these rocks to put my shoes on and as everyone else is going to get food I'm coming up with this reason why I can't be with them and I need to go home so I finally get home after wearing this tight mask that I'm okay that there's no problem and I lay down on the floor and I'm on my yoga mat and I'm getting more relaxed and more relaxed I played a relaxing song it was hard to get on the floor but I, I felt pretty okay and after 10 minutes of laying on the floor I go to get up and I can't move. My back's in shock. All the muscles around my spine are tight. All the muscles in my external obliques and my internal obliques that support your torso were tight and shocked and couldn't move. And so I was completely restricted, couldn't move my neck, couldn't move my back. And I'm thinking to myself, holy shit. You know what? It's funny because this is an open forum. We're doing a 40-hour podcast. I can literally say whatever I want, whether anyone listens to it or not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a moment to literally um, visually take off my mask with you where I could say something that would, that would put me in a better light, give you maybe a higher opinion of me, um, help me be perceived in a certain way. Uh, and, and instead of that, I'm going to take the mask off and just honor my truth. I know this isn't a confidential space, but this isn't a life or death conversation. But it, what it is, is a statement to the universe that I'm paying attention. I'm listening. It's an act of faith. What Ian says is like a grand gesture. I'm taking the mask off with you as a grand gesture to honor my truth. I lied to Ian and to Mosin that after I, after I finally struggled and got off the yoga mat, I told Ian and Mosin that, which I did have a men's team call every Monday, seven o'clock to 10 o'clock, our men's team meets. 
so I did have a men's team call. Uh, but I lied to them that I was going to be on it, and I lied to my men's team um, why I couldn't be there. So I messaged my men's team, hey guys, won't be able to make it tonight, um, preoccupied in San Marcos. Didn't tell them. The purpose of the men's team is for me to be able to take my mask off and show up with my truth. And I was in my ego, living from fear and of judgment, of, of judging myself for being such an idiot and doing this. Um, you know, I talked this talk about uh, masculinity and commitment and respect for yourself and trust for yourself, and I wasn't doing those things, and so I didn't want to be seen in that light. I want to be liked, obviously. So I lied to them, and I lied to Mosin and Ian that I was on the call. So I lied to them why I wasn't on the call, and I lied to Ian that I was on the call. And uh, what I did do was I finally made my way into my bed, and I had my laptop, and I started playing some Rick and Morty because I was just trying to think, like, maybe if I relax, uh, you know, maybe I spend a day or two, you know, just in bed, and I'm fine. But um, I got to the point where I had to take a piss, and I could not move. And I'm saying to myself in my head, did I fracture my ribs? Did I fuck my spine up? Did I do some sort of damage that's irreversible? And so I'm starting to look up spinal injury protocols on the internet and eventually find my way to the Red Cross and called the Red Cross and told them I was in an emergency situation. I hurt my back. I can't move. I need somebody to pick me up with a spinal board. I used to be a lifeguard and so... Um, I know how important it is if there is a spinal injury to keep it immobile, uh, immobilized. So I called them and told them I need an ambulance. I need them to come. Um, and finally, um, I had to let Ian and Mosin know that, hey, guys, like I'm going to go to the hospital. Hey, guys, I want to get some x-rays of my back. I want doctors to be um, around just in case something happens. And uh, Red Cross called the police and the ambulance and they came over and Ian and Mosin were super supportive, obviously. As soon as they knew what I was actually dealing with, they just wanted to know that I was gonna be okay. They just wanted to be there to support me. They just wanted to know what they could do and how they could uh, show up for me. Um, and so they helped gather my shit, put me in the back of the ambulance. Um, the Ian helped carry me with the firefighters into the ambulance uh, on the spinal board because I couldn't walk. And the, <laughs> the biggest unforeseen bitch was how bumpy the roads are in San Marcos. So I'm laying down now uh, as Ian um, says goodbye. And he asked me, do you have anything to say for the camera? Because the dude's always got his camera out. And I said, um, the ego is the enemy. And if I was to say it again, I would say, in the more positive affirmation of commitment before ego. I would put my commitment before my ego. And that's where the roots conversation, that's where the sowing of the seeds conversation comes in. Because we ask ourselves, what seeds are we sowing? With our thoughts, with our feelings, with our experiences, with the people we spend time with, what seeds are we sowing? Because the, the personality as Joe Dispenza talks about in Rewired, in Change the Habit of Being Yourself, in You Are Supernatural, and You Are the Placebo, in all of his work that he does in his meditation and retreats and seminars, he talks about the personality essentially being your response to stimulus over time, repeated response to stimulus over time. So as an example, um, I have certain thoughts and because of that stimulus, I take certain actions or I have certain feelings or I have certain beliefs. And that this personality is shaped by your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And then being the seeds, that's what's sowed so that future is your personal reality. What does life look like in front of your eyes? So my personal reality, the harvest of the seeds that I was planting were me being in the hospital for two nights in San Marcos, Guatemala unable to move, them shooting um, painkillers into my ass, not having quality enough Spanish yet to be able to communicate what I needed and, and to ask them if I was going to be okay and to thank them for taking care of me. I couldn't do any of that. Um, 
that was what my personal re so my personal reality was. I was in the hospital for being an idiot, for acting from my from fear and from doubt and from uh, my my ego. And so that's what this question, that's what this conversation is going to be about over the next 48 hours on this podcast is what seeds are you sowing? What are your predominant thoughts? Who are your predominant influences? How do you feel on a regular basis? Is it love? Is it truth? Is it your heart? Or is it fear and doubt and anxiety and depression and hopelessness and overwhelm? What seeds are you planting? Because impact is perceivable in our personal reality, so how it shows up on the outside world. But it starts from the seeds that we sow. So what are the thoughts we're sowing? Who are we doing it with it? Um, what are the feelings that we're trying to generate? Which is why I really appreciate Michael Miller so much. And I'm so happy to have met Michael over the last few days. He and Ian hit it off um, their first couple nights in San Marcos. And uh, they did a three-hour podcast together. And Ian said to me, he's like Mike Maluski, except for um, the Irish version. And actually, I'm not sure where Mike's family's from, but his mom might actually be Scottish or Irish. So um, there's just so many uh, connections there and roots there. Um, and reasons to have been called to Michael's character and as soon as I met him there was no rush because the guy is rooted in his heart and he's grounded um, and he showed me over the last few weeks that I can slow down and that I can see people and I can hear people and that I'm heard and that I'm seen if I'm not forcing it and rushing it and so he spent the morning with Sage, making sure that this whole space was taken care of, making sure that everyone's doubt and fear and anxiety were turned, as he calls, into gold, right? And I feel like gold right now. I don't know if I sound like gold to you, but this is only, what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes into, 20 minutes into the world's longest podcast. And as Ian said, it's never ending. So I actually had a funny realization. We have a tattoo together that says, till the end, it's to celebrate our, our friendship and our brotherhood and uh, he's always had my back and I'll always have his back and other than my dad and Jim Rohn and, and obviously more men that I meet are con continuing to contribute to who I become as a man and the direction I take and, uh, and I have to uh, add the women as well who have changed my life in so many ways um, so thank you for that um, but, but Ian is, is this man who I've met seven years ago we, we had a business relationship and a friendship that was brewing and when I met him I needed him in my life so badly um, it was the universe presenting um, a mirror to me a mirror to me like a soul brother um, I, uh, I was in high school uh, when I experienced depression and anxiety and a lot of doubt and low self-esteem and I wasn't taking action I was sitting on the couch and I was smoking weed and I was playing video games and I had all this instant gratification and um, my parents when they started their business um, it was hugely beneficial for me it was a such an important part of my journey they started network marketing and a company called all communications network and the reason why that was such a beautiful vehicle is because the seeds the roots was in the right the right place they're doing a chant so I'm gonna see the face of the Instagram live and then I'll pick this up they're doing a chant. Oh my God, are they singing the Impact song? That's amazing. Yo, impact. here. Oh, Eagle Impact, Impact. Oh. Ooh. Now. You dumb? I want to, everyone here. You dumb? I just really want to say that we owe a lot of debt to Greg. Yeah, we do. Let the fireworks tell you. <laughs> Damn it. Yo, okay, so I'm so excited for these errors, and you'd be like, oh, Jonathan, it's not seamless, it's not perfect. I'm totally reconditioning the way that I look at errors. Like, we went from zero to one with this event. Zero to one. That means it had never happened before, 
at least for us, I'm sure in the in the grander scheme of the multiverse and quantum fields and unlimited realities happening all at the same time. Oh, wow, look at this. Um, we're going to have a live feed from the event, from the show, that is going to feed into the podcast, and then we're going to be able to seamlessly swap it back and forth. So for you that are tech geniuses, tech wizards that would like to produce a world-class event, Impact 2, Impact 5, Impact 10, um, we would love to find out who you are, how you can contribute. Our vision is to turn TEDx style events where we have inspirational speeches and make it the most fun event that anyone's ever been to in their entire life because fun is a conduit for the lessons. Fun is a vehicle for us making a difference in the world. Celebration, being playful, uh, it, you know, it's going to change the world if we find a way to integrate it together and create a really novel experience. So, I actually don't know what's happening right now. Um, oh my God, I think I'm gonna go pull this, pull this live recording for this ceremony. So I'll be right back. But yes, Tech Wizards, we would love to be able to have the live event happening. What, what this is, is the podcast booth. So we're in the booth right now, uh, but it's separate from the live event. So what we want, is and this is the vision is we have the live event happening and that is creating the feeling the live event is essentially creating a happening a lightning bolt some energy and we're going to take that and we're going to pull it into the podcast booth and we're going to bottle it and we're going to create the best recorded conversations that any of our guests have ever experienced in their lives we're going to create the best recorded inspirational conversations real conversations from the heart rooted in this feeling of making a local impact, thinking global of what we can do to make a difference in the world, rooted in that feeling and then bottle it on the podcast show. So if you're a tech wizard, a tech genius, and you think you can see that vision or you would adjust it and make it different and, and make it more malleable, um, there's a, there's a canvas for you to paint on. Impact 2, I'm not sure what's going to happen, probably in a, in a month or a couple months. And we'd love to have the live recording of the speakers happening, panned on and, and happening on the podcast as well. Um, whoever's running the show at the time will be able to comment on it, watch it along with the audience so that when they're done, and they are celebrated for the light that they are in the world and the difference that they're making. And they are escorted like a, like a god, like a goddess, like a king, like a queen, right? Over here to the podcast booth, it is the best recorded conversation they've ever had. So uh, obviously there's all sorts of logistics to figure out because there's a speaker after that and we want to make sure that that gets recorded and then it comes over here because the podcast will be like, you know, 15, 30, 50, 45 minutes and the speeches are 15 minutes. But that's the intention. That's the idea. Like I said, we're going to zero to one for us with this event. We would love to call you in if you have gifts, whether it's videography, storytelling, um, you're creating an NGO or an organization or a charity that's making a difference in the world. Some of my favorite ones in the world are Jack.org, Youths uh, Canada's number one charity revolutionizing the way Canadians look at, talk about, feel about their mental health. It's for uh, for young people. They, oh my God, I'm getting so fucking excited. I'm so excited. Uh, Jack.org is just one charity. There's so many. Uh, let me explain them while I'm talking about them right now. But if you're an, an NGO or a, uh, a personal brand or you are an activist, volunteer, someone who's making a difference in a local community where we could talk about it on a global scale of what's working, what are your challenges, how can we support you, and how can we get support from you. Those are the people that we're thinking about working with. Those are the people that we'd love to call in your gifts. To give you an example, one of my favorite charities in the whole world, Jack Dador, changes the way Canadians are talking about thinking about and acting upon youth mental health and their mental health. Um, over a decade ago, the Windler family, Sandra, Eric, and their children uh, lost a beautiful light. They lost their son, Jack. Um, he was a first year student at Queens University and um, committed suicide. 
as a first-year student. And at the time, Eric and Sandra and their family were uh, successful business people, um, you know, valued friends and uh, community members, and this was such a traumatic loss, devastating loss for them and their family. Um, but knowing the type of people they are, and knowing the type of man that Eric Windler is, um, he wasn't going to, and I, you know, I can't even imagine him. I'm so sorry. I can't even imagine what that could have felt, that it must have felt like. But as Michael said, um, all doubt, all fear, all tragedy can be turned to gold. Um, and in, <laughs> Ian's out there screaming. Um, as a, I'm trying to remember the book, it's about World War II, um, who the author was. I forget the name right now, but I would uh, totally remember it if someone brought it up to me. But he was essentially saying that um, any how is possible if the why is present. Right? It was about um, Holocaust survivors going through the Holocaust and Auschwitz and their experience. Man, I can't believe I can't remember the name. But anyway, any how getting through the, the most devastating circumstances possible if the why is present and um, if the way you look at it, the, your perception of it um, is, is chosen, right, intentionally out of a vision you see for the future rather than limited by the memories of the past and what you know from the past. So this devastation happened to Eric and his family and they decided the way that I'm going to look at it, this is, um, if it could happen to us, it could happen to anyone. So we, we could choose to sit aside and, um, you know, try to sweep it under the rug and not talk about it, try to move on, or we can talk about it and open up dialogue and have conversation about uh, mental health and suicide and, and realize that if it can happen to anyone, it can happen. If that can happen to us, it can happen to anyone. And so they started doing that and Eric started advocating for youth mental health and talking to parents and finding out that it really was very common. In fact, suicide is the number one health-related cause for young people between the ages of uh, 15 and 24 in Canada. That's suicide. Number one health-related cause of death between youth 15 and 24. And so what they did um, is actually such a beautiful... Hey, what's up, y'all? So the podcast is, uh, the podcast is rolling. Hey, what's up, Michael? I was just talking about Jack.org and uh, Eric Windler and his family and Jack, Eric's son, Aaron Sanders' son. They lost their, they lost their son, Jack, to suicide in, uh, over a decade ago. Yeah, he was a first-year student at Queen's University. And um, Eric said, if this could happen to us, it could happen to anyone. And so he started to advocate for young people and their families and say, hey, we need to have a conversation about mental health. We can't sweep it under the rug. And that was over a decade ago. And they found very quickly, less than two years into their programming, that they were no longer going to talk at students. They weren't going to go at schools and talk at students. They were going to go to schools and call in students because they're the ones with the stories. They're the ones that can relate to young people. They're the ones that have their brothers and sisters um, in the classrooms with them. And so they actually became a platform to teach leadership and advocacy skills and found young people all across Canada that wanted to make a difference for their peers. They wanted to have um, thriving mental health. They wanted to feel good um, and live beautiful lives. And now today, 10 years later, of teaching young people how to advocate for themselves, teaching young people how to be leaders and to tell their stories in a way that calls in conversation and opens up dialogue and comes from the heart. Um, they have over 2,500 network representatives all across Canada, every single province, every single territory. They send young people into schools to have this conversation about mental health. 
They set up chapters, local Jap chap chapters in the schools where they can create community events to keep the dialogue going all year. And um, and they host uh, they host events called Jack Summits that happen multiple times a year in different provinces and different territories. And so I'm happy to be able to share one of the cha uh, the charities that has made a huge difference in my life, huge difference in my life. As I mentioned, they're a leadership um, container. They're a container for young people to stretch and grow, and to meet inspiring young people, uh, to meet fun young people, to broaden their, their network of um, basically people they look up to as role models. Like I came into that space full of doubt and fear and feeling small and was so welcomed and uh, expanded so much of my communication skills and my leadership skills because of Jack the Org. And um, they are a huge part of the Circle Up book, which launches November 1st. So much so, November 1st, 2021, it's the beginning of Men's Mental Health Month. We launched the Circle Up book. Uh, they made such an impact on my life. They are so interwoven into the tapestry and the fabric of my story um, and my experience here that every single dollar of profit every single dollar of profit will be donated to jack.org so if you buy a book buy 10 if you're planning on buying 10 buy 25 uh, every dollar of profit will go to jack.org the book is about men's mental health uh, so much about jack.org wow so much about jack.org um, there's an entire entire chapter dedicated to them in the book uh, it's chapter four. Uh, it's about self-care and becoming self-sufficient and realizing that everybody has mental health. In, Can in Canada, the statistics is that one in four people will struggle with their mental health in any given year. And the key takeaway from this conversation about one in four will struggle is that inherent in a statistic like that is that there's three other people it's not that they don't have mental health at all, it just means they're not struggling, right? So everyone has mental health. The question isn't do we have it or not, the question is is where are we on this mental health spectrum in any given moment of our lives? And so they were a huge part of uh, me becoming the type of person, the man necessary to write this book, to confidently and proudly bring it to the world where I know without a shadow of a doubt, if you buy one for a man you love, if you buy one for five men you love, if you buy one for 10 men you love, then the world will be a better place because men learn to take care of themselves. Men learn to be honest with themselves. Men learn to ask for help. The purpose of the book is to make the hardest action and the most important action as easy to do as possible which for men and for mental health is help-seeking behavior, to know when you're struggling, recognize when you're struggling, and be able to ask for it. And on the flip side, to know when another man in your life is struggling and to know how to show up for them powerfully. So that's Jack.org. Uh, every dollar of the book profits will be going to Jack.org. We got, um, I think Michael, yeah, what's good, baby? Calling you in to help join me with this conversation. I think we've been recording now for almost 40 minutes, just going for it. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael. Um... Just recruited um, Jonathan's first um, guest. Oh, she's a marvelous lady that just spoke on stage and wow. is very open-hearted and ready to join this open-hearted conversation. I heard you speaking about suicide and these um, really raw um, feeling experiences. And this woman is feeling mm. her life is feeling, and she's a lot, a lot of love, and she's ready to come in here and share um, with you what it is to impact communities. Beautiful. Um, so I'm going to bring her into you Amazing. right now. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. You still rolling here? We still rolling. Yo, world's longest podcast, baby. Never been done like this. I'm digging this necklace. Thank you, Christian, for inspiring my fashion. Yo, Guru Paka, stylist of the new world, Christian. We're going to host Guru Ween. Hey, how are you? What up? This is the other side. Quick recap for you if you're interested in learning more about michael miller check out the spin frequency podcast 
wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're interested in the Till the End podcast, which is between Ian and I, look up Till the End, wherever you listen to podcasts. And since this was a solo episode for the most part, I will plug myself. If you're interested in men's mental health, supporting a man in your life, giving them the gift, the symbol of knowing that without a shadow of a doubt, you have their back. That no matter what they're going through, whatever struggle they're having, that they are not alone in that struggle. It is human to struggle. Then you can pick up a copy of Man You Know I Got You, which is the book that accumulates all of my knowledge and lessons of personal development, mental health, and masculinity over the last decade on Amazon. Man, you know I got you. We just created the paperback version so you can have that shipped to your house uh, within a couple days. And my recommendation is to get it as a gift for a man you love, a brother, a husband, an uncle, a boyfriend, a friend, it doesn't matter. Pick up a copy for someone you love. Every single dollar of profit goes to Jack.org. And if you listen to this whole episode, you know why it's so important. Love y'all. Episode one, season eight, 